Hey guys, it's Henry from FSW. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some of those difficult parts of the VFR sectional chart. The VFR sectional is probably one of the hardest things for a beginner pilot to learn. There are so many different symbols and things you have to learn that sometimes it can take years to really understand it. For example, off the top of your head, do you know what this weird blue line is? It indicates that the class golf airspace goes higher than 1200 feet AGL, in this case 14,500 feet MSL. Or what about this flag? It's a VFR waypoint or reporting point. ATC can tell you to fly to these locations while you're on a VFR flight plan. This is probably one of my favorite elements of the chart to confuse pilots on. They're fairly common, but most pilots just never have taken the time to learn the intricacies of the chart. Plus, when you look at the chart legend, it doesn't actually tell you what this flag means. All it says is name and some letters below it, but most people can't figure out what that actually means. I actually got a question about one of these on my written test, and I couldn't figure out what it was. I'm not sure if there are any questions on these on the written test, but you could definitely get asked about this on your checkride. Now that we've reached the middle of the video, I'm going to quickly go over some that are pretty simple. These are wilderness areas. You're requested to stay over 2,000 feet AGL when flying over these locations. This is the symbol for an NDB, or non-directional beacon. This is the symbol for an NDB with distance measuring equipment. This is a tower less than 1,000 feet tall. It has the MSL altitude on top with the AGL altitude on the bottom in parentheses. Any altitude in parentheses on the VFR sectional is always going to be an AGL. This is a tower taller than 1,000 feet. This is a marine light. Now, let's get back to some more complex ones. Next up, we've got these goofy things. If you look at a wider view of this area, you can see that there's an MOA around the airport. Most people don't notice the arrow at the southwest portion of the airport. It tells us that this area around the airport is an exclusion from the MOA, up to 1,500 feet AGL. Okay, this next one is probably one of the stupidest things the FAA has ever come up with. If you look at the difference between these two ceiling boxes, you can see that one of them has a minus before the number. If there were no minus sign before the number, it would just mean that the ceiling was 3,000 feet. But since there's a minus symbol before the number, it just means that the ceiling is actually 2,999 feet. Now, I'm not really sure what the FAA was thinking when they created this rule, because no pilot or altimeter is that accurate. In reality, this marking doesn't really mean anything. The only reason that it exists is because this Bravo airspace has a floor at 3,000 feet. I guess the FAA just didn't want the two airspaces to overlap. This is a National Security Area, or NSA. They're noted with a thick, dashed magenta line around the perimeter. Sometimes, however, they can be very small and only noted with a solid magenta filling. All NSAs are marked with an arrow to a note, that tells us that it's an NSA and what altitude to stay above. You are only requested to stay above this altitude, however, and not required to. Next up, we have these blue lines. They differentiate areas with different floors of Class E airspace. For example, on this one, we have 5,500 feet as the floor of Class Echo airspace on the west side and 1,200 feet on the east side. These are often found offshore and in the ocean. If you don't have a paper chart and need to look at a sectional, be sure to check out vfrmap.com. They've got a WAC, a sectional, and a TAC all built into one. Well, that's all I have for today's video. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and happy flying.